Record. All right, I'm in record. <laughs> wait, 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 no, 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 no. You yeah. can't get it. You, you gotta right. go back. You gotta go back. Okay. Oh, no, no. I'll tell you right now. I know who that is. I did have this semi spoiled for me. I, is this somebody I know? Yeah, yes. And I think I know who it is. Okay. Well, I, I think it oh, I who it really sounds know. like. Sorry. Um. Okay. I have to. Try. All right, I'm just gonna. Turn that on mute. I need to make sure I don't get fucking copyright flagged. Um, I'll also go to YouTube. You can tell me when it's over. Oh, fuck! Uh, uh, All right. I thought who? Yeah, it's over. It's over. All right. I thought I knew who it was, but hearing it on the second go around, I'm not sure anymore. It, it has been confirmed um, by the director. I thought it was Jonathan Majors, but... Alright, it is not Jonathan Majors, no. No, okay. Um, I, I will tell you who it is, if you wish. <laughs> it is someone I've seen. Yeah. In the MCU? No. Oh, okay. But you is it Ali? Right. Yes, it is Mahershala Ali. Okay, okay, so okay. This is technically Blade's first appearance in the MCU. And that's the only thing I've heard about these post credit scenes is that apparently Mahershala Ali was in them. And he even wasn't. It was just his voice. <laughs> okay. Oh my god, dude. That first post credit scene. Oh my god, dude. You have no fucking idea I, how I don't. <laughs> ridiculous that was. So the first character is fucking uh, Pip, right? His, his name's... Uh, right. Uh, Pip the Troll, I think. Um, and he is basically like the he in the comics. He's like the partner, like the like the f best friend partner to Adam Warlock. <laughs> and so when he showed up, I was like, "Oh my god, is Adam Warlock gonna show up?" Mm. <laughs> and then he didn't. And then what's his face showed up? Um, Arrow. Harry Styles. Yeah, Harry Styles. <laughs> Yeah, Eros is the brother of Thanos, and that's like almost all I know about him. I I don't really know anything about him. I I think I think he's related to the Eternals, and I know he he's the brother of Thanos, and that's about it. And he, oh damn, I guess you said that's about it. I was gonna say, so is he like bad, or does he agree with Thanos? Does he disagree? How did he get away from Thanos? I honestly like. Don't know. There's a lot of questions I need to know. Like. Yeah, no. My, um, like all my eternal stuff is really weak. <laughs> um, which is Eros. <laughs> yeah. So that's Eros uh, slash Star Fox. I think is his other name, which they said. Uh, but I don't know enough about him. But I know Pip the Troll is supposed to be with Adam Warlock, but <laughs> here he is. And Adam Warlock is part of Guardians, right? Yeah, that was the person who showed up at the end of he's, Guardians Two. Yeah, he he was like the the casket or the like, the, the cradle that the Sovereign were making uh, to be, like, the ultimate enemy of the Guardians. So, I think the biggest theory that people have is he's going to be, like, a villain at the start of Guardians 3, and then he'll, like, become a hero. Oh, okay, this what I was going to ask. Is, like, Adam Warlock like, a good or bad person? Yeah, he's, like, like he's honestly, like, the main character of the Infinity Gauntlet. Probably, like, you know, it's, like, a big... Wait, story. what? He, he's like, like you know, Thanos is the main villain of Infinity Gauntlet, and he's like kind of the main hero. Like he's the one who kind of brings everyone together to fight him. Um, oh, because okay. he's he, you know he was originally the guardian of the Soul Stone. Um. Oh, okay. Hmm. But I guess since they're going like completely different with him, considering like Thanos is already dead and that's all dealt with, James Gunn is going to do something completely different with this character and. Uh, apparently Pip the Troll is going to be a more of an Eternals kind of thing. So, who knows? Um, yeah, that was crazy. Wow. Okay, uh, wow. And then we have Dave here. <laughs> yeah, I don't... Okay, so give me give me a little... Who's Dane Whitman? Is he, he is the... a character called Black Knight. Um, he's like the best swordsman in the Marvel Universe. Like... He's completely right. in, like, out of everyone else's tier in terms of swordsmanship. Um, his that sword is called the Ebony Blade, right? Um, which was like passed down through his family and shit. 
and it's probably like I think it's like from a meteorite or something like that. Um, it's like able to cut through any object and shit, and oh, um, it get to cut through dimensions. <laughs> maybe, um, but it's also like supposed to be cursed and shit. So like it drives the user oh, okay. insane and stuff. Oh, that's gonna be cool. Man. Um, I think Black Knight was mostly associated like with the Avengers at different times. Um, but I don't know too much else. I think at I think he was part of like the Kang the Conqueror storyline. Like, mm. like he helped the Avengers fight him. Um, but yeah, <laughs> he's a, he's kind of a neat character. Um, so I was really excited when I heard that Kit Harrington was gonna be playing him. He used to be a, another sword badass. Yeah, um, yeah. I was gonna say it's kind of cool that he already knows techniques and stuff with a sword. So yeah. it's just like yeah, he's one like of the best right sword place. performers on Game of Thrones. Um, yeah. So I don't know what Blade's doing there though. <laughs> but hey, that, okay, that's all I was about to say. So what does like where does Blade come into that? I, I honestly don't know. They they both fight evil. <laughs> they might they might work together? Maybe I don't think Kit Harrington has any like shows or movies confirmed like starring him so maybe he'll just be like a character in blade when that comes out maybe mm-hmm. he'll be like a, a co-star in that movie i don't know yeah um that's pretty much all for the post credit scenes <laughs> i don't really have a lot to say uh other than that regarding the uh, post credit that's... scenes i have a decent amount to say about the movie though Unless you'd like to start. No, go ahead. Go ahead. All right. First of all, uh. yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, no, I'm just like, I'm like, I'm very anxious to hear what you have to say because I, I just want to see if it's what I'm thinking. All right. Go ahead. First of all, I enjoyed it. I, I, I did enjoy this movie um, and I would definitely watch it again. Uh, and I think, like, I think my biggest problem, like, here, here's the first thing I'll say. I actually think this movie did a really good job of introducing fucking ten characters. Yep, And having there it you be go. in like, an ensemble cast. And most yeah. of them are, like, pretty unique and memorable and compelling. Yep. <laughs> I think I would have preferred if they put more focus on some of the more interesting ones. Um, hmm. Mm-hmm. And here's my such biggest as... problem. Uh, such as, like, I think Druig could have gotten more screen time. Makari mm-hmm. could have gotten more screen time. Mm-hmm. Thena. Like, Thena, they gave her, like, yeah. stuff, but it didn't really amount to much. Like, I enjoyed okay. her storyline with Gilgamesh and how she, like, avenged his death and, like, was able to move past him. But, like, mm-hmm. her whole, like, disease thing, like, was interesting as a character, but it didn't really add much to the plot. And I'm wondering mm-hmm. if they're going to do more with that in future stories with these characters my right. biggest problem i think is that cersei was like the most uninteresting eternal like she wasn't yeah, really interesting I, to me yeah i i i was going through that too because i was like okay but like what makes her interesting i, I was like is she is it her like battling with the fact that she doesn't want to become leader but she never says it like yeah. really really like she doesn't it's not something she like really mills over it's just kind of like sort of there but sort of not and i'm like okay but you're not giving me enough to be like oh man she's so compelling it's just kind of like okay yeah. you're just like a a person who like this is thrown on you you're like i don't want to do it it's like yeah but that's everyone in that situation like what makes you different type of thing yeah um, i just couldn't i can't really say much about her character she was just kind of like you know she she felt it's really Jesus. hard to say it's really hard to say but she felt more like a plot device and character which is one of the worst things you can say about a character and it feels bad saying it but i kind of feel like that's the case like shut up, mm. like she was needed for the story so that she could use her powers to save the day in the end and i think what makes that even worse is that her powers were just like so like not her powers powers but like the power to like petrify stuff was just so ill-defined and it showed up once when she used it against the deviant 
and then they just kind of formed the finale around that without yeah, ever I, really going into it, you know? Yeah, I'm about to say, I, I'm going to be honest, I still say I don't really understand, like, how they got to the conclusion. Well, like, I get it, but I also don't get Well, the thing is, also, they didn't really... No, no, they did connect, right? They did connect to, in order for her to petrify her. Right? Yeah, yeah, she needed the okay. power of the Unimind yeah. that they established. Yeah, but even still, like, I... I, I, there was many times in this movie I was like, Sprite, what does her power do exactly? But, yeah, I, I'm, I mean, I yeah, it, just, it did kind of feel plot device yeah. From baseline, her power is like matter manipulation. And then they added like that on top of it, which <laughs> it was kind of weird because it's like, you know, she can manipulate matter, but not like biological matter. And then it's like, all right, well, she can manipulate biological matter when she needs to save the day. It was a little weird. But, um,. Aside also, from, yeah, like to sum up her character, when they asked her, like, uh, uh, "Seriously, tell you something about yourself?" She's like, "I can turn rocks into a blah. I can turn rocks into a blah. I can turn rocks into a blah." I'm like, "Yep, that makes sense. It, it all comes back around now." <laughs> but besides her, I thought all the other characters, even though they didn't get a lot of screen time, I thought they were all like compelling. Like, I really liked Icarus, like, <laughs> beyond the fact that he's, like, a twist villain, I thought he was, I thought he was done pretty well. Um, mm -hmm. I don't hate him as much as I hate other, like, Marvel twist villains or twist villains in general. I thought mm -hmm. he was, you know, good enough. Um, I, I'm not sure how I feel about the way he went out, or it's just, like, he just kills himself in the end by flying into the sun because he's Icarus. <laughs> So like it was I feel so like, like on the nose that I was like Ugh. I get like I think yeah that's part of it but also like they just kind of removing the possibility of doing more with the character so it'll it'll always just feel like all right well this was like a cool start but they could have like done more with him in the future and they could bring him back you know just like they could bring back Gilgamesh I guess if they really wanted to because they did introduce the idea of like the Eternals being like created on like essentially like hard drives and they have like saved consciousnesses and stuff right so and i guess want... they are repeated like over and over again yeah i think like they're... yeah they like take them and wipe their memories and then use them and shit <clears throat> but let me just see if i can go through the rest of them uh kingo is really fun kingo is like mm -hmm. i think he was supposed to be kind of the comic relief but he was honestly like a lot of fun to watch and he also had yeah. some kind of like I don't know. I felt like I felt like I really empathized with him. Yeah, like, same. He believed in his original purpose, unlike the rest of them. But he just didn't want to fight his friends or, his, or what he yeah. considered his family. I thought that was kind of compelling, and I thought it was really daring of them. Like you were saying, that they didn't bring him back for the final battle. Yeah, like, change of mind. Yeah. he stayed firm to like what he believed in. Right. And I thought that was kind of cool. Like it, it's it's a bit it, sad because he is interesting and we didn't get him for the finale. But it's also kind of like that just shows how committed he is as a character to what he I, believes. I I'm kind of glad he wrote it that way though. Like, um, and I I think at the very end where you know Cersei's like, hey, did I do the right choice? And he's like, it's like too late to kind of think about it. Like you you've done it now. Like I and he's like like stand firm with that too. Like you know I mean, I thought I thought he's really cool. Yeah, I like how they they were seemingly like still on good terms with each other, even though they were completely at odds in terms of, mm -hmm. you know, how they thought they should handle the situation. Um, Sprite was interesting. Um, I think they yes. could have done more. Like, I think they had a good base idea for what her character was going to be, and they could have pushed it more. And the thing is, a lot of this is like, you know, this is a movie with a, you know, an already decently long run time. So I know they can't give more to a lot of people, but, um, I thought like what they did with her was interesting, and I'm glad she's still around, so we can maybe see more of her in the future and what she'll do. Like, I'm hoping they, I'm hoping they write her well because one thing that's really that you know can be a big mistake when you're writing a female character is making everything about the character be about a man, which I think they you know they kind of did that in this movie, mm. but yeah. You know, yeah, you're you're right. <laughs> but I'm glad they're keeping it around. Like at least, like I felt like, even though they did that, it was still interesting to me. Um, 
and you know they're keeping her around. So hopefully she and she's actually like, is she the only Eternal left on Earth? Well, she's not an Eternal anymore. I guess she's a fucking human, but she's the only one of them who oh, was is, Eternal who's left on Earth. Wait, is that what Cersei did to her? Yeah, she made she's her like, human, took her... so she would. Yeah. Oh, would okay. Aging. I don't know if she oh, still has okay. her powers, but she she will age now. Um. Oh, all right. I didn't know that. <laughs> uh, Fastos was really cool. I think he was just kind of like, like a really chill guy who. I don't know. I just felt like I, every time, I, like when we saw him with his family at home, I just felt really good for him. I'm like, yeah, this guy, uh, he's yeah. finally come to peace with himself, you know. And but he's still like, he still loves his eternal family, and he's willing to you know help them out when they need to save the world and shit. I thought he was just a really cool guy, and I like how he he kind of fucking bodied Icarus in the end. Like he kept him held down oh, yeah. for the rest of that fight. That was yeah. pretty awesome. That that whole fight was just really the fight cool was to watch, great, dude. Oh my god! Like I I like in the past few things we've seen in Marvel, like Shang Chi was some really good action, but that finale right there for Eternals. Is on some top notch. That's on Marvel Civil War Infinity War for me. Like that shit was nice. It was pretty fucking cool. Um, The stuff Makari was doing was so good. It it really reminded me. I want. (laughs) Yeah, go ahead. You can can gush over it before I go to the nitty gritty. No, go ahead because I wanted to hear you. I was just saying, like, oh my god, that was so dope. Like, go ahead. She was awesome. My favorite bit was when she just like. She did the whole flurry thing, and then she just did the thing where she ran and just stopped in front of him to, like, wind blast him against the wall. <laughs> that shit was so fucking cool. Um, My favorite part is, like, yeah. right before that, she, like, gra- like she takes him, she, like, grapple throws him. It just looks so fucking cool, I dude. love the bit where it's, like, shot from behind her, and she's running towards him, and she, like, dives over his <laughs> laser beam and, like, punches it. It was so fucking cool, dude. So yeah, that that whole thing was awesome. But um, what I was gonna say, I I watched a video. I don't really remember who or what the context was, but it was a guy talking about like super speed in movies and how he feels that with like the hyper success of the Quicksilver scenes in the X Men series, uh, yeah, super speed scenes have kind of devolved down to just like the time stop kind of effect where it just shows up right. doing the stuff in normal speed but everything else is super slowed down. I think he called yeah. it like the time in a bottle effect because mm-hmm. like that was the song that I was playing in Days of Future Past. Um, right. And he felt like it was removing a lot of creativity that could be put even though they're really cool, there's a mm-hmm. lot cooler ways to show super speed in this guy's <laughs> opinion. Right. And they never actually did that in this movie. They just showed like no like what it looks like to a normal person and how just ridiculously like <laughs> like you get you it's honestly like impossible to fight against something that crazy fast um so i thought that was interesting uh <clears throat> let me see she also did like the head grab run against a wall thing <laughs> like i love that in any form of media where it's <laughs> anime or movie like, like a, i just love early and goku <laughs> Yep, Broly Goku, yep, yep, yep. Um, um, I wanted to say, like, off the whole super speed thing, I think this is also the time in the bottle thing, but I, I kind of like what they did in, like, the Justice League movie with Flash at the very end. Oh, where he, oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. All that, yeah, all that, that stuff. That shit is really cool. cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I yeah. just don't like the way he runs. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's it, fucking dumb. I don't really like the fucking performance. Out. I mean, the performance. I mean, uh, whatever. We already talked about that. Go watch fucking yeah, Justice yeah. League video. Um, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> one thing I actually kind of liked, I liked um, I liked Makari and Druig's like, relationship. How yeah. that was kind of happening in the background. like, uh, And that's kind of how you probably should do it, because you don't have a lot of screen time. So just in the mm-hmm. background, I noticed they were kind of, like, having a growing relationship between the two of them. That was never, like, really the focus. And it kind of ended mm-hmm. with, you know, when she thought he was killed by uh, Icarus, like, she let out the mm-hmm. only, like, vocal performance she had in the whole movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and then at the end, like, they had their, you know, when the day was won, they were the ones who had their little moment together. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I actually am really excited to see where that goes. That could be a really cool, like, little romance story to tell in future installments. 
uh, Druig on his own, he was like really interesting. <laughs> like he felt like it feels like he was the one who could have been, been a twist. villain. <laughs> not not even I, a twist and, villain. He's like he, he was a he's a character who you feel like could be a villain oh, in right. a different kind of story. But in here, it's just like right. he does morally questionable things, but it's all out of like his. I feel like I feel like Druig honestly is the one who like ended up loving humanity the most. Most right, right, like, you right. Know, like I feel like Cersei and Fastos and stuff. They they really ended up like they you know they betrayed the fucking Celestials to save humanity because they over right. the seven thousand years they lived here they ended up kind of growing to love them. I think Druig was the first one to come around to that idea. When mm-hmm. back, you know, back in the fucking the pillaging of the Americas, when the conquistadors right. were just destroying the Aztec Empire, uh, he was the first one to be like, you know, these this is wrong, and that we're just kind of pawns of these evil beings. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I just feel like that was really neat, I, and how he just seems so like morally questionable, questionable, but it's all from a stance of like fe- <laughs> being right. I don't know. Yeah, no, I I really enjoyed his character too. Um, the moment he was like, "This is fucking wrong," I was like, "All oh, right, this is like," I was like, "Oh, so I really thought I, I when you said that he's gonna be like, or like he could be a villain, like a different you know story." I genuinely thought for like the first half of his movie that he was gonna become the villain. Right. And I was going to be like, oh, okay, that's kind of interesting because it's like he's fighting for humanity, but also like the whole like we have to control them to keep them calm type of thing. Right. I don't know. So, yeah, I, I, I was thinking that and then it went like a whole different route and I was OK with that route, too. Um, I, I so. was between him and Icarus being like the twist villains and I thought that Ajax might have been involved in some way, but Same. she ended up kind she, of she, being the, the red herring, I guess. Yeah, she she was a a very interesting character throughout this for me because I I didn't really know what they were going to do with her her in general. Yeah, I um, mean she was I don't know very open ended. Like I get, I mean I don't know. I felt like she was more she was also kind of plot driven in a lot of ways. Like they did give her the bit at the end where she was you know one of the ones to say we have to stop the emergence and shit, but you know. During the entire, you know, present timeline of the movie, she's dead, and yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I think it was. I, I don't know. I think she was one of the ones that didn't land as much for me, just like Cersei. Um, and then uh, Gilgamesh is oh Gilgamesh and Thena are the last ones. Gilgamesh is great. <laughs> He's just, he's just a big teddy bear who's also just Ooh, fucking give it up for Don Lee. <laughs> I like how he just. I like how he managed to settle down, and I don't know. I I wish we could have seen just a little bit more between him and Thena, because I felt like those characters on their own are decent, and when they're put together, could make a lot more like interesting stories if they had more time for it. I I wonder how well this would do as a six episode series. Oh my god! Oh, ah, fuck! Really? I th- I really wanted to say that. I was right. like, I think this is one of those. Movies that would be really good as a series, yeah. um, just so you can put more emphasis on like like the characters and stuff like that. And also, for me, I felt like it's, it's hard because I like the way the story is told with like going back to the past and showing like different parts of like these upcoming civilizations right. and their part. They're a part of that, but also I feel like it almost feels like padding. And it's like, okay, okay, but get to the... But, like, ah, it's so weird. Like, I don't know. Like, it's, like, a lot of different angles I want to, like, see it from. But at the same time, like, okay, but, like, I, like, get to the next thing. I want to see, the ne- like, the next thing in the present type of thing. That was me yeah. personally. I, like, but... Yeah, I'll give my thoughts on that in a second. Um, but I wanted to mention that the trade-off of having a series would be... I don't think the finale would have been as, like, grand, you know? Um... I don't know. You seen that Loki finale? You want to talk about yeah, that? Yeah, but that was mostly like three <laughs> just, people in a room talking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but okay, going back to what you're talking about, the way they told the story with like the flashbacks and then the present time, I really like. I found myself 
feeling like every time we went back to the past, the movie was okay for me. And I was just like, okay, mm. yeah, I'm getting these characters and learning about them. But every time we went back to the present, I was actually enjoying myself a lot more because we were seeing these characters in a more loose environment. We're seeing where they ended up. And I feel like, I wonder what this movie would have been like if they hadn't done, like, if they did maybe, like, one flashback at the start to establish how they got to Earth. And then you were just kind of, like, picking up context clues while they, like, slowly went around and gathered all of them up. So you got to learn, like, you know, um, Kingo's a Bollywood star. And it's like, well, I wonder how he came to be like that. Um, there were a couple that stood out, like, the, right. the Druig one stood out for me, like, that was good. But then there were others, like the Thena one, where I was just kind of like, all right, yeah, I get, they're just kind of like doing, you know, lore exposition here. And I'm just like, right. I don't know. I felt like some of the flashbacks I just wasn't engaged in. Um, and I, okay. whereas I feel like every time they went back to the present, I was, you know, I was like, all right, I'm, I'm grooving with this. I'm, I'm enjoying these characters playing off each other. Um, wow. Okay. For, I would actually say I think it's the opposite for me. Mm, um, I think in the past I was like, "Oh man, this is very interesting." I like what they're kind of like doing with the characters. I like that they're kind of like doing this thing of like kind of like the exposition, but through a way that's like engaging to me because I get to see like almost like these rising and falling of these civilizations, right. and they're just like kind of like I see their character development through this, but it's not it's not really related like it is but it's not type of thing I um it's just like they're living and i thought that was really interesting and then when we went back to their present i'm like okay but they're not like it's not they're not doing anything we're just like waiting to get to the, like the next plot point i get you thing. um um but yeah i think that's, i think the cool. reason one of the bigger reasons that i feel this way is that i felt like the characters were given much more chance to show off how unique they are like you got an entire scene devoted to fetching Kingo and you got to see what he was doing with his life. And so you got a lot more insight into him as a character because the scene was more focused on him. Whereas okay. in all the past scenes, they were all just like, you know, the team of Eternals who were going around defeating uh, the deviants. Right. And so it was a okay. lot harder to get to gauge like the differences between them, even though, like, okay. you know, they were there, but I feel like see, yes. and it's one of those things where I'm like, but well, now I'm seeing it like, well, I feel like both things are needed now because I, I kind of like the whole team of eternal things, but I also like the whole like Bollywood thing and like seeing where and like um, what's my dude's name who has the family? Like I like seeing that too. So it's like, um, yeah, I, I don't know, man. It's, it's one of those things where like, okay, well, I kind of like both, like for different does. reasons. Um, yeah. But, I mean, beyond that, I'm trying to think. Um, oh, I was, I was thinking like towards the fucking. Um, okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> huh? Are you worried I'm gonna say something? I I I'm not worried. I just want to see what we're about to okay. say. <laughs> so, when during the final battle, um, I was really perplexed, and this went through to the end of the movie with the decision to put so much focus on the deviants. Thank you. Okay. Because I feel like the deviants, like their only real reason for being in the story that couldn't be written around was to give more character development to Gilgamesh and Thena. Like to give her like a nice little like really thing, moment to happen in the climax. Yeah, because she had to have her battle and come to terms with like his death and stuff. Um Okay. Okay. And beyond that, I think they could have kind of written the deviants out of the story and not really, and like had more time to focus on the Eternals themselves. Because the final battle was, you know, the Eternals turning on Eternals. each other and them having to fight Icarus and Sprite. And so I feel like if they had taken the deviants out, we could have gotten more chance to focus on these 10 characters and how they all got to this point in the finale where they need to fight each other. And I just kind of feel like the deviants distracted that without. They distracted from that without adding enough to the story to justify themselves. Yeah, it's it's one of those things for me because I was going through it like I felt like they either should have made it where because I thought the whole idea of the Devi the deviant taking their uh, like powers and becoming more sentient and realizing like yeah well we're just fodder and then like the Eternals re realizing like 
damn, we're just fodder also, in yeah. a sense. And I thought that was cool, That's but then cool you idea, threw yeah. in... Yeah, but then you threw in um, Icarus, and I'm like, oh, okay, so now we're more focused on Icarus, and then the one sentient deviant just leaves, and he doesn't come back until the end, and I'm like, okay, well, now it's like, okay, what's the point of this? It's either you should have made it where it's all deviant, like, all the Eternals versus deviant, but also there's this, like, internal battle of, like, you know, like, what the fuck are we, and what, the, what are we doing? Or you should have just made it, like you said, like, just cut the deviant shit out and just have Icarus, but try to do both just felt like it was. It just felt like like yeah. why like yeah. why are we having one or the other type messy. of thing. Um, it was messy. Through. Yeah, that's a great way of because I it. thought that shit was really creepy when he like takes like uh takes uh, Gilgamesh's power and he mm-hmm. morphs into like a city. He's like you like I'm gonna kill all of you. That shit is cool. Yeah, that like, was I, a really cool like, idea that they could have delved more into. I think they should definitely choose them chosen one or the other. Um. Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> That's a genuine complaint, I guess. Um. Yeah. Trying to think of what else. I can see uh, what <laughs> has been talked about, where it's like this finale uh, seems yeah. a little too consequential, and like, how okay. the fuck is Earth gonna move on after yeah. witnessing not only this big finale where a celestial almost comes out of the planet and kills everyone, but also another celestial shows up in space in front of the Earth? Like, how do people? Like, yeah. How do how do regular people just kind of go about their daily lives now without thinking about these kinds of things? <laughs> I guess the answer is they don't, but we're still going to see them do just that in future projects. I bet. Yeah, I uh, I, I I um saw a bunch of people talking about like now it's got to a point where no one understands the power scaling in the MCU. Like the Eternals are so fucking crazy with their their abilities and shit. I was just like. I, I was like, I haven't seen a movie that I can't, like, have no idea of. But I can kind of see what people are saying. Like, the <laughs> turtles are pretty fucking strong, dude. Thing. Like, that's actually kind of accurate to the comics. Like, no, like <laughs> in the comics, all the characters are scaled to the extent they need to be for the story. And that's kind of <laughs> what I feel like they're just going to kind of accept and do here. Where it's like, they already kind of were doing that in Infinity War and Endgame, where it's like, People like Mantis are fighting in the fucking final battle. It's like, what the fuck is Mantis gonna do? You know? <laughs> it's like, yeah, you're right. You know, and I think that's a fine direction because it just, you know, just accept that, and then you can be more creative with how you tell stories. Uh, one thing that's also kind of hard, like, to believe, which I can, I can like, just uh, uh, suspend my uh, belief, but it's like. <laughs> the idea that some of them do care about humans. So when Thanos come, I would I would expect at least one of them to show up to the fight and be like, "Yo, like I'm trying to help you guys as yeah. much as I can." No, no, that, just... that was that was just kind of like a, a throwaway line where they were just kind of saying, "Yeah, we really don't have a, a better reason than this, so just kind of like don't think about Go it too much." It. Yeah, and it's like, yeah, that's it, like I would say it's lazy writing, but I honestly can't think of too much else without having to add in a bunch more scenes about like why they wouldn't be there like that they'd have to add in an entire subplot for that and i'm just like all right yeah. you know I that's why i thought they were going to go with the whole like the very beginning of this movie where it shows the 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 past and then it goes back to the present i thought they had completely like lost their like mojo type of thing it was going to be about like them coming together to get it all back to save the world type right. of thing um, and I was okay, that kind of counteracts the idea that obviously they didn't know they had abilities, so why would they go fucking fight Thanos? Um, but yeah, th- I mean, either way, I, I, don't, I don't really care, but I just thought it was funny because I'm like, no, you guys just say you like humans and you're gonna let fucking Thanos wipe out half the fucking you. They're like, that's we don't get we don't meddle with human problems. I was like, he's wiping out half the universe, not just humans. And it's like they didn't really go over, like, did, did any of them get blipped or anything? Like, they just didn't really acknowledge that. It's just like, yep, and it's fucking th- hashtag I want to see more blips. So yeah, well, that's kind of the thing is that a lot of like Phase Four projects have been dealing with like, all right, which characters got blipped? How is that going to affect the story? Like a lot of stories are centered around the blip now, and it's like, um, they just this is kind of the most removed one, I think, and I 
you know, the main reason kind of has to be this is a movie that's introducing ten characters in, two, in like two and a half hours, and we need to, you know, spend our screen time wisely. <coughs> Deviant. Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I i so hearing like feedback for this i'm pretty sure this is like the most mixed reviewed marvel movie in the entire mcu yeah it um, is i, I it's weird because i don't i think this movie is pretty good I, I i think i like it more than black widow i would go back and watch this yeah black widow is fine here's like, the thing i think this is a good movie i can also see why it may have gotten mixed reviews because this movie is, you know, this, you have to kind of want to care about, you know, you have to be the kind of person who's going to go into a movie and you want to be in the mood to learn about new people. <laughs> like this movie <laughs> is here and, and it wants to introduce you to a big cast and you have to like, um, you have to be ready to accept that. And I, I say that because I know that there are people who don't enjoy TV shows with like ensemble casts. Um, and even that, I actually, that was me before Game of Thrones. Well, I, I actually, would, uh, I, I still kind of struggle with that. I, uh, for example, um, I could never get into twin peaks because I just like, I just felt there were too many characters and I didn't like mm. the story wasn't grabbing me enough. And I wasn't like connecting with enough of the characters. No, right. Right. And that's kind of the risk of doing ensemble cast. And that's like that. a classic, right? Don't a lot of people love? Yeah, my brother piece. loves that show. Um, but um, I mean yeah. that's how because I, I. So for me, I I go through that like with TV shows at the beginning because I'm like, it seems like they're throwing a lot at me. Mm -hmm. I I definitely went with that. Uh, went through that with the Wire when we first started watching. Oh, I was yeah. like, man, this is a lot of characters, Riley. Yeah, like, they throw you. In the <laughs> holy shit, dude. Yeah, and then by the end, I'm like, fuck, I'm glad it gave us all these characters, all these people with yeah. different personalities who play off each other so well, you know what I mean? Yeah, it can be done um, really well with, like, The Wire and Game of Thrones and Euphoria. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Euphoria. But, uh, yeah, I was going to remember. But, you know, it's not everyone's taste to have that kind of, you know, experience, especially with how Marvel kind of <laughs> operates. Like, the <clears throat> excuse me, the biggest, like, debut close to ensemble cast is probably like guardians right where they introduced like five or six characters uh, right um and this is a lot more ambitious like it, it's almost like an exponential curve where it's like the more characters you introduce the uh the harder it's gonna be to buy people into that because you know every character needs a lot of screen time and a lot of writing to get you know people to care about them and i think given the size I of this cast this movie did a pretty good job that's why. That's why I, I still feel like it's not to the point where I'm like, "Yo, this movie fucking sucks." No. There's some people that were like pretty visceral about it, though. Like, no, I don't think this movie sucks at all. I don't think this movie is even like really bad. I just think this movie is something that not a lot of people are going to get too invested in. Um, mm -hmm. And and there are other things like I think this movie gets some big things wrong. Like I think this movie, like the main character of this movie, isn't that interesting. And I think that's a big problem about it. But that yes, is kind of covered up fair. by having, you know, the rest of the cast being, well, most of the rest of the cast being you know, <laughs> interesting and compelling. This movie has, you know, messy plotting with the fact that there's kind of two antagonist tracks going on that don't really right. connect to each other at all. I think those are those are problems to note when you're talking about, like, the quality of this movie. But, um, I don't know. In the end, I think that... Anything that this movie does wrong, you could say there are you know, other Marvel movies that do things that are probably more offensive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's uh, fair. Yeah, I, I would say, I, I would agree with you. I'd say I enjoyed this more than Black Widow. Um, even though Black Widow had some good stuff in it, it also, I think, is a less solid project than this. I think this is, mm -hmm. like, decently solid with hiccups that may drag it down and maybe on future rewatches uh i'll change my mind but just on a first impression which is what these are all about uh i was i was impressed with how they engaged me because i didn't expect to be uh you know we went you and i i think both went into this <laughs> with just like zero expectation it's like all right the, mm -hmm. it's all it's the burden of the movie to impress us 
And I can say that <laughs> there were many times here that I was thoroughly impressed. Yep, same. Uh, how do, how do you feel with it fitting with Shang Chi? Where where would you off for all first all first impressions? Where do you where would you sit it? Um, I'd say Shang Chi's better. Um, mm, I've seen okay. that movie twice now. I'll I'll say that. Um, okay. But I think like the only real weakness I had with Shang Chi was like the kind of the slow middle bit. Um, I know a lot of people have problems with the final battle and how. Yeah, I was like, gonna say for me's finale. Yeah, and I could <laughs> see that. I don't have too much of a problem with it because I don't think it. Even though it's like not as interesting as a lot of the kung fu shit they've been doing, um, <laughs> I don't think it really overstays its welcome enough to be a problem for me. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, I'd say Shang Chi would be better. Um, okay. Yeah, I think. I think. Uh, in my opinion, I would say Ch- Shang Chi has a better uh, opening middle act, um, and kind of falls short in its finale. Whereas with uh, Eternals, I actually really enjoy its finale. I think, like, <laughs> I feel like it's very grand. Like, mm-hmm. it, maybe it seems a little bit weird for the MCU, and like, because it's such a, it's so grand. But I think Where that's the so fuck cool was to me. Strange? <laughs> <laughs> Doc- I was like, where's the Avengers? <laughs> Doctor Strange was pulling people from across the universe to the Avengers con- compound like the minute he got brought back to life. <laughs> yeah, but again, that's like, I think we're getting to the point where we're seeing these MCU movies and we're and people are coming to terms the same way they did with the comics where it's just like, you just need to accept some stuff, you know? Like, the Avengers aren't going to respond to every threat. <laughs> There's but, no justifiable reason why. Deal with it. Enjoy what you're getting. To be fair, though, like, the Avengers at this current point aren't the Avengers. Yeah, like, there's no, like, we literally Avengers. don't. Yeah, there's no one really there. Yeah, Thor's so I mean, Hulk is, like, incapacitated from the snap. Uh, Black Widow's dead. Hawkeye is just, like, kind of trying to be retired. And then Captain Marvel is Captain- also off. World, yeah, she's Nick Fury's yeah, she off world. Oh, God, stuff, yeah, and then like Tony and Cap are gone. Um, yeah, yeah I understand that. Like, there's still the whole, the idea of Doc Strange, but he's probably dealing with his own shit given that uh, there's a movie he, coming out like in a couple months. He's also been helping young teenage boys, so you know, yeah, he's changing the world in his own way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's dealing with his own stress, and Wong won't help him out, so. Yep, yep, yep. No, we we were caught up. <laughs> we've uh we've seen all of uh, 2021 Marvel now. That's exciting. Good movies. Good, good stuff there. Yeah, there's 2021. Good stuff. I think it was a great year. I was watching um I was watching uh what was it? It was a Shafrilis video. And I'm trying to remember what it was about out but i can't i think it was no way home it was his no way home review i just kind of like popped it on Mm -hmm. to see like if he liked it or not and uh he said something along the lines of like in a year where marvel just like shoveled mediocre content at us i'm like geez that's not that's not i i really enjoyed this year of marvel Um, i thought they did some like really cool unique shit like outside of just normal like i thought really like and slash really trying to like kind of think outside the box with their movies yeah. and not well, just be so I mean formulaic. they kind of have to because like Endgame was basically like the mother of all traditional comic book movies of like you know the good good versus evil this is what people expect out of Marvel at this point after 10 mm. plus years and now like all right we've kind of hit our peak in that style of movie now we kind of have to like be more creative and we get to be more creative and we've gained mm-hmm. the trust of this massive fan base who's going to, you know, if it has Marvel's name on it, they're going to watch it. And mm-hmm. so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah. I mean, there's definitely some stuff that's a lot better and the stuff that is worse, but uh, the year overall was great. One thing going back to eternal sub, because I wanted to mention this actually and I forgot. Um, that's funny. I'm pretty like this movie uh didn't do too well financially. Like um I don't nope. like I don't know the exact numbers, but um one thing that I hope uh Disney and Marvel haven't forgotten is that, you know, 
back in phase one when they were doing their first you know few movies uh iron man like did amazing and then incredible yeah. hulk and iron man 2 and thor and maybe even captain america one they you know they didn't do amazing at the box office but they didn't just like give up on the franchise after that mm-hmm. like they did just barely well enough to you know and they could see like if we can just make these last long enough to where we could do mm-hmm. avengers we can do that right you know and i'm hoping they kind of you know keep with that idea where this movie even if it didn't do too well that doesn't mean they should just can it and can the characters and i think they should take what they made here learn from what didn't do do well and just make a better product in the future whether it could be eternals 2 or whether it be bringing them into other projects i hope that's what they do honestly it's just so weird because i would like to know why people didn't really vibe with it well and i wonder is it because of like the main character is it because it's just all the characters it could be all the. it could be you know people just weren't engaged with the characters i could see that i mean people might just feel like you know i'd rather have you know two or three main characters who have a lot more characterization than what we got here where it's just a bunch of scattered characters and none of them have as much characterization as you see in another product where you have like a strong main character who you really feel is characterized much better that's fair i mean i could see that I mean, these are the same people who are going to sit three hours to the cut of a justice league movie so like I don't, I I don't know if those are the same people. <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm just, I'm just playing. I know. I'm just playing. Um, uh, no, but I, I, you know what's funny is like a Justice League, the Justice League thing came across my mind a couple times watching this. Yeah, um, I've heard. I yeah. actually have seen like some comparisons to that uh, when kind of treading through spoiler-free stuff. Um, mm. I can kind of see that, but I think the thing with the Snyder Cut is that it's so like it, it's in the name, like. You can feel that movie is a Zack Snyder project, and so a lot of what I remember from that movie is, like, not, you know, this big ensemble cast of, uh, (laughs) you know, medium to highly to lowly written characters, but it's just very... (laughs) Go on, go on, (laughs) go watch the, the Snyder Cut video. Um... Because pretty much all my fucking thoughts of that movie haven't changed since we watched it the first time. Um, Have you watched it again since then? No. Okay. Uh, I've watched like I I watched it. I I started it again and I stopped after like the first like hour and a half. Um, mm. just because I didn't really like you know it's a really long movie and I just was like I could probably do something a bit better with my time not that i wasn't enjoying myself just like all right i've seen this i know what happens and i just didn't you know if i want to see stuff from that movie i'll wa- i'll go back and watch the scenes that i liked I, w- I don't think i would sit through that whole movie again from start to finish just because it's like mm. there's stuff in that i don't like it's really bloated it's really long and i just can't afford that kind of time mm. um yeah, that's fair. Even but Stephen Wolf on the uh, the fucking like uh, I wanted to say Olympus on the um, like whatever. The, yeah, that yeah. shit was cool. That's cool. <laughs> that, that, that like some that. cool shit. Uh, like I said, the Flash is cool. Um, but yeah, it, it's sorry. That's 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 just like we <laughs> were talking about like, whatever. Um, yeah, you're off topic. Eternals was good. I liked it. Uh, the only reason I thought about the Justice League thing is because it is a brand new cast of characters. Well, they're introducing a lot of characters and we don't know anything about them. So I was thinking like, it's like Justice League. And I'm trying to like, I'm like, I hope they don't do a thing where I'm like, okay, but why do I care about any of these characters? No, I generally like most of these characters. I mean, I don't even, I don't even necessarily dislike, um, Cersei. Uh, yeah, Cersei. I just, like you said, I just think she does kind of bland she just, mm-hmm. she just don't do it like she's just not she's just yeah. uninteresting but that doesn't mean the make her a bad great. character the actress did a great job it's just i feel like she needs more to work with mm-hmm. um yeah uh one thing that i can kind of quantify about my like and dislike is that for every marvel product we got this year i have rewatched it soon after we finished or in the case of the shows i would rewatch the episode in the time between them coming out um and like the next one right yeah like the next, the next episode, episode yeah. coming out yeah um 
and this one I'm definitely gonna re I'm gonna rewatch this in the next few days. Um, and I don't have any problem with that you know Black Widow. It took me a little while. Like it took me a you know I I waited like a week or two before I sat down and rewatched it, and I enjoyed it. You know I still enjoyed that movie, but. You know, it's not something where it's like a couple, a couple of days later, I'd be like, "All right, I gotta, you know, I gotta rewatch this." Um, it, I'm not even sure. It's I'm, I'm funny. Not, yeah. Oh, sorry. You're not I was sure just gonna what, say, like, uh, I'm not sure. I I'm gonna be like that for this movie, but I'll be like, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna be sad to sit down and see this again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think it's funny because. Um, since you you are a person that go back and rewatch, and I'm just a person that I've watched it once. It takes me a while to go back and rewatch yeah, something. So like, I, Endgame. Did. No, exactly. <laughs> like, dude, Endgame has been out for what two, three years now, and like, I have yet to rewatch that movie is it all the way from beginning to end. Is it because you're worried it won't like match up to the theater Matches. experience? I, well, well, well. The thing is, I do that with everything, so I can't even. Right use the theater experience thing i i don't know because like when I, like back when like they were in like when did iron man 3 come out Iron Man 3 uh, was or like what, what phase sorry uh, that was the start of phase two yeah like i used to watch like iron man 3 religiously like a lot like on repeat yeah and like i used to watch like all the early movies like a lot mm-hmm. it just got to a point and then i watched the finney war like a million times oh yeah <laughs> civil war same thing it's just like after though I think after Infinity War, I just stop watching things over and over again. Right. Like, yeah, I, I don't know why. I, I should. I definitely do want to go back and rewatch the movies just so I can get like a different perspective, or maybe just be like, oh, or like uh, reinforce what I've already thought about it. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I definitely, definitely want to go back and rewatch Loki. Like I said that, but it, you know, it's just well, I know. Well, for two things. So one. Um, Rewatching Endgame, I highly recommend it because, like, while you know you might not be able to relive the great theater experience we had watching that movie, <laughs> I still <laughs> loved watching it because it's just like without the whole like you know when I got to sit down and focus on it, I just I was still just so impressed by how much care and thought they put into that movie and into the writing of the movie, and I thought the performances were just so much they're so good and it's, that movie's great, dude. Um, and then the second thing, if you're thinking about, like, you know, rewatching stuff, I did consider, like, uh, since we've done all these Phase 4 thoughts videos, uh, if at any point we rewatch older movies, we could do thoughts videos on them. Oh, I would love that. Iron I would Man 1. Love that. <laughs> Iron Man 1, Incredible Start Hulk. Start with Iron Man I was, 1, Incredible was... Hulk, yeah. I was having a conversation with my mom about Incredible Hulk, and it made me want to go back and watch it mm-hmm. just so I could see the the like fighting because I was saying like that is the most visceral like Hulk it's I've seen in Hulk a while. Action. Yeah, and I was just like, I want to go back and rewatch it just to see how I feel about it. Being that I'm a much older now, and yeah. I still love Hulk, so it's like, what do I? How do I feel about it now? Um, yeah, because I I used to look at that movie with like dream color eyes, like nothing when, was touching that movie. Dude, for when me. Hulk it when Hulk is there in that movie, that's a great ass Hulk movie. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'll say that. About it's it. just it's just two thirds of that movie. He's not there, so <laughs> I, it, <laughs> I I don't want to say a lot if we are gonna do videos on that, but yeah. um, yeah. I'll say like my thoughts on that movie have always just kind of been like i love the first third like everything even with bruce banner in brazil is so cool like i love all the stuff in there and then the middle third is boring as shit except for like the battle at the university and then the final act and then the final act is great when fucking samuel stern is on screen and then kind of boring until the final battle gets started and then the final battle is like pretty good but hey, maybe on a rewatch, my opinions will change. <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, man, you tell me I get to watch Iron Man three for a sixty seven time? Yeah. Uh, Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah, but we could do videos like this if you want to, and like just say you know, whenever you get a chance, because I, I like I rewatched the MCU like <laughs> embarrassingly like too much, I think. Um. So if at any point you get time to sit down and watch Iron Man, you can just say, hey, I did it, let's do a video on it. I could probably just rattle it off from memory. <laughs> um, I bet. Or if you give me uh, for the, like, you know, at a time notice, I can just 
correct that pretty quick because you know it's not that hard to get a little bit of time to watch a movie. Mm-hmm. Um, That's true. But yeah, the next thing is gonna be Doctor Strange, I believe. So, boy, I'm so ready for that movie. Yeah, dude, uh, that's that movie's gonna be so cool. That is, oh Jesus Christ, that is. I have no idea what the hell is gonna be happening there. I love that feeling. Like for these, for a lot of this new shit, I'm like, I don't know what the hell they're gonna do or that's what the hell they're that's doing. Exactly like how I want it to be. But like the ending of fucking uh, Far From Home had me like, what the fuck are they gonna do with Spider Man? Like, what is going on with this character? Oh, yeah, man. At this point, yeah. So I'm looking forward I to can't everything. Wait man. for Far to, Far From Home to come out on digital because I want to see that movie. And I don't like, I don't feel like going to the theaters again because I think I can hold out until it comes out. Oh yeah, uh, I think at I home. Can't do- I just I want to see that movie again, dude. And I don't I I've never liked watching like cam cam recordings of uh, movies and theaters. I've never been able to like get. <laughs> I've never been able to watch it without feeling taken out of it. Um, yeah, same. <laughs> but uh, yeah, just like my brother told me that he like I'm pretty sure even now he hasn't seen that movie in theaters. He's only seen it on like a shitty cam recording. I'm like, how can you do that what? to yourself, dude? Oh my God. How can you do that what? to yourself? That is blasphemous. <laughs> what? Yeah. But yeah, teach his own. Uh, so yeah, that'll be, <laughs> that'll be the next thing. 2022 is going to start off. Hopefully crazy. Hopefully. Ready for some Shumagorath. <laughs> oh my god. We're getting, yeah, we're getting Cthulhu monsters in, uh, in what's the name? Yeah. And, um, People are really excited about Shumagorath. Um, is, like, is he, like, very present in the, um, in the, uh, comics? Shumagorath? Yeah. Um, like, I, why I, are people excited about him? He's just, like, a really, like, impactful uh, character slash entity in the Marvel comics. He's d- he's basically just like a Lovecraftian monster <laughs> that like eats reality and shit. Um, so <laughs> he's also a playable character in like Marvel vs. Capcom, <laughs> which is just so weird. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to do that. We should uh. They they like officially released the uh the trailer that they showed at the end of Far From Home, so Yeah, yeah, they did. Maybe we could watch that again at I, some point. I'm down. I actually watched it uh on my own. Yeah, um, I haven't rewatched it <laughs> since we saw yeah, it. I I wouldn't mind going going back and rewatching it again. Uh I re- I rewatched it just to hear uh what's the name talk about um Westview again. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Strange so, can't afford Disney Plus. <laughs> <laughs> yep, 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 yep. All right, I'm gonna go with everything though for Eternals and Marvel in general. Yep. Yo, this is a long. This ended up being a long one. Holy shit! I actually, I can't believe we talked about Shang Chi for like less than thirty minutes, and this is going on an hour. <laughs> Fuck me. You know, because we always do that thing where we like. Like go back into like Marvel movies and stuff. I just love talking about Marvel, man. Yeah, I just love it. It's so crazy. It just That's why, like, <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Up. go ahead. No, you're you're. I I was gonna say I was just really excited when I had woke up on in my YouTube was auto playing some dude talking about like the comics where fucking Captain America took us part of Hydra, and I was like, yeah. I'm really in. And it's like I want to know where this goes. And by the end, I was like, "Wow, I want to read this comic." But like, even though I know what happens at the end, yeah. <laughs> um. Uh, I think maybe one of the other reasons that Shang Chi was just like pretty solid. So it was, you know, here we're ta- here we're spending a lot of time talking about like you know the goods, the bads, and kind of our mixed feelings on uh, mm-hmm. how we feel at the end. Where Shang Chi is just like, yeah, it was good. You know, it had you know one or two problems yeah. here, but overall it was just really good, and I liked it. You know. So, this fair. See what happens next. Any final thoughts for our, um, our our brave soldiers in the field? Not at all. All right, cool. Eternals, yay.